Wetsuits, wetsuits, wetsuits. It seems that nowadays, choosing a scuba wetsuit can be extremely confusing. Manufacturers have all kinds of words and jargon that they use for their wetsuit, and it's hard to compare one to the other because you don't know exactly what they're talking about. It can become very, very difficult. Well, stick around because in this video, we're going to cut through the clutter and we're going to show you what you need to look for so that you can pick a wetsuit that's going to be right for you. What exactly is a wetsuit? Well, in its simplest form, a wetsuit is a diving suit that basically creates a layer of water between your skin and the suit itself. It uses your own body heat to heat up that layer of water and traps it, which allows you to stay warm when you're underwater. Oftentimes I'm asked, do I need a wetsuit to scuba dive? The answer is that it depends. Remember that wetsuits have two main purposes. The first one is exposure protection, exposure from the sun, exposure from the elements when you're scuba diving, from the reef, jellyfish, or even if you're diving on a wreck. The second purpose is to keep you warm. Remember, we're taught that water conducts heat 25 times faster than air. So if you're a person who, gets, who doesn't get cold very easily, even if you get in moderately temperature water and you're in there for any amount of time, you're eventually going to get cold because that water is going to sap heat from your body way faster than air can. So if you dive in cold water, you're going to need some sort of thermal protection and a wetsuit is a viable option. There are several different types of wetsuits for you to choose from and which one you choose depends on the type of diving you do and how much thermal protection you need. Before we go into details about thermal protection, I want to go over the types of wetsuits. The first one we're going to discuss are shorties. Now shorties are wetsuits that are used in very warm temperatures and they don't cover your arms or your legs. It basically looks like you're wearing a t-shirt and a pair of shorts together. Those are not wetsuits that you're going to use in extremely cold temperatures. The next thing we're going to discuss are full wetsuits. Full wetsuits go all the way to the end of your wrist and all the way to your ankle. And these suits keep you much warmer than shorty wetsuits and can be used in many different temperatures depending on their thicknesses. These suits also pr pr provide protection from exposure on the reef or in a wreck or even from the sun on the surface all the way to your wrists. Next, we're going to discuss long johns. Now, long johns are two-piece wetsuits that are used in colder temperatures. And the reason why they're two-piece is because one piece goes on your body and basically looks like you're wearing a tank top and it goes all the way to your legs. The next piece is almost like a shorty wetsuit that goes on top of it that goes all the way to your, your wrists. And what this does is it provides double the thermal protection in your core to keep you warm. There are also rash guards. Rash guards in and of themselves do not provide any thermal protection. It's essentially basically like a thin layer that you put over your skin. And what it does is it protects you from exposure. So God forbid you rub up against a piece of fire coral or a jellyfish, you're not going to get stung because of the rash guard. The last type of wetsuit is what's called a semi-dry suit. These suits are extremely thick and are used for very cold temperatures. Before we go on, do us a favor and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your scuba diver friends. It really helps us with the algorithm and it helps other divers see this content which we feel is extremely important. We're going to move on to wetsuit fit. The first thing we need to discuss is that different manufacturers have different fits on their wetsuits. If you're buying a wetsuit from one manufacturer, and let's say that wetsuit is a large, that doesn't necessarily mean that a large for another manufacturer is going to fit you. Think about it this way. When you buy jeans, the jeans from one company might fit you in one size, but if you go and buy another pair of jeans from a different company, they might have a different size just because of the way they manufacture their jeans. This seems to be a big issue with wetsuits. So the first thing that I'm going to tell you is regardless of which wetsuit you think you're going to buy, you need to try on your wetsuits and you need to try on different manufacturers. Be ready to understand that just because a large doesn't fit you with one manufacturer doesn't mean that it's not going to fit you with another one. The next thing that you need to consider is that if you're going to buy a wetsuit online, you need to go to the manufacturer's website and look at their size charts. You can measure your body and then look at their size charts to figure out which wetsuit size might be best for you. 
Also consider that different manufacturers make different wetsuit sizes. It's not just small, medium, large, or extra large anymore. For example, my wetsuit, the wetsuit that I use to scuba dive is actually a medium large. So they make sizes in between medium and large for different people depending on their builds. And that's something that you can take advantage of if you don't fit in a certain size wetsuit. And lastly, manufacturers make wetsuits cut for men and for women. So you need to decide which cut is best for you. The other thing you can do is you can have a wetsuit custom built for you. And if you do that, you're gonna to go to a manufacturer that's going to custom build your wetsuit, they're gonna measure your body, and they're gonna build one for you. The thing you need to remember though is that this is much more expensive than buying an off the rack wetsuit, but it is something that is out there should you consider it. Let's go over how to choose a wetsuit and the considerations that you need to think about when choosing one. First, we're talking about scuba diving wetsuits and you need to make sure that whichever wetsuit you buy is made for scuba diving. Scuba diving wetsuits are not the same as the wetsuits used for rowing or for triathlons or for swimming. Scuba diving wetsuits are made with a type of neoprene which does not compress as easily as the neoprene that is used for other sports. So if you try to dive with a wetsuit that's built for swimming, that wetsuit is not going to provide you thermal protection at depth because it will compress as you descend in the water column which will make the wetsuit basically useless. So the first thing you need to consider is that when you're choosing a wetsuit, it has to be a wetsuit built for scuba diving. So here we have a chart that has suggestions for how thick a wetsuit you may need depending on water temperatures. The temperatures themselves are both in Fahrenheit and Celsius. For the purposes of the video, we're gonna discuss them in Fahrenheit, but you can see the conversions right on screen. Remember, this chart are merely suggestions and it's separated by divers who tend to feel warm and divers who get cold easily. You need to decide what is best for you based on your tolerances and how long you're in the water. Let's go ahead and go over it. If you're diving in water that, it's, that is 85 degrees or more, you can get away with diving with just a swimsuit or a dive skin if you're a person who tends to feel warm. If you get cold easily, you might want to go with a two millimeter wetsuit just so that you don't get the chills when you're in the water. If you're diving in waters between 80 and 84 degrees Fahrenheit and you're a person who tends to feel warm, you can try to start with a two millimeter wetsuit. If you get cold easily, you might want to consider moving up to three millimeters. Once we get down to 74 to 70, 79 degrees, you're definitely, want to kind of cons you're definitely going to consider diving in a two to three millimeter wetsuit if you're a person who tends to feel warm. If you get cold easily, a three millimeter wetsuit with a hood or even a five millimeter wetsuit might be an option. Once you get down to 65 to 73 degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to need a three to five millimeter wetsuit if you feel warm. Or if you get cold easily, you might want to consider even going down to five to seven millimeters. In either case, a hood would be suggested. If the water goes between 50 and 64 degrees Fahrenheit, you're gonna to wanna to dive with a seven millimeter, millimeter wetsuit or a semi-dry wetsuit with a hood if you're a person who tends to feel warm. If you get cold easily, we recommend a dry suit with an appropriate undergarment and a hood. And we have a video that goes over dry suits. You can go ahead and check that out in the description. Now, if you plan to dive in waters below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and you're crazy enough to do this, you're gonna go ahead and drive dry or semi-dry with an appropriate undergarment or hood, or basically decide not to dry, dive at all if you're a person who gets really, really cold in the water, because 50 degrees Fahrenheit is cold water. The most important factor that you're going to consider when buying a wetsuit is that it fits properly. Nothing is more important than that. No matter how thick a wetsuit is, no matter how expensive it is, if the wetsuit is too big, you will not be able to maintain heat because water will pass through the wetsuit. So when you're choosing a wetsuit, fit is paramount. The seals of your wetsuit need to be snug, but not so tight that they cut off circulation. You're going to test the seals on your wrists, your ankles, and your neck. All of them are gonna be snug because they need to hold water in once the water gets in there. 
However, they cannot be so tight that they cut off circulation because that could potentially be dangerous when you're diving. Aside from that, when the wetsuit is on your body, there should be no excess room anywhere. You should not have any loose room around your arms, around your back, torso, etc. The reason why is because excess room can cause a potential for water movement, which means that you're not going to be able to stay warm. So you want the, the wetsuit to be snug. The reality of the situation is that wetsuits are not comfortable. Yes, they, you can find a wetsuit that is comfortable, but comfortable for a wetsuit. So keep that in mind. When you try on your wetsuit, you need to test your range of motion. Yes, it's not going to be as easy to move your arms or your legs when you're in a wetsuit, but you need to be able to do so fairly comfortably. You need to make sure that your arms can move. You need to make sure that you're not so tight that you can't kick when you're diving. You also need to make sure that you can touch the back of your neck with your wetsuit on. One of the things that you can do to test this is you can kneel down and take your arm and put it on the back of your neck. This simulates you reaching for your tank valve. If your wetsuit does not allow you to touch the back of your neck, it is too tight. The last thing that you need to remember is that thicker wetsuits make it more difficult for you to move. So keep that in mind as well. We're gonna move on to the different types of materials that wetsuits are made of. The vast majority of wetsuits are made of neoprene. And there's two types of neoprene. There's open cell neoprene and closed cell neoprene. The vast majority of scuba diving wetsuits are made with closed cell neoprene. This is because it is easier to don and doff these wetsuits and they are very good for scuba diving. Open cell neoprene suits are available and can be used for scuba diving. However, these suits require lubricant to put on and are much more difficult to put on and take off than open cell neoprene suits. Lastly, some manufacturers are now experimenting with other materials besides neoprene to create wetsuits. You need to do some research on that to figure out if you're interested in buying a wetsuit that isn't made of neoprene. For example, you could be allergic to neoprene, in which case this would be an option for you. One of the things that I know they use is limestone. They use a scientific process to create a neoprene-like rubber with limestone and then they create wetsuits with it. So if that's something that interests you, you can do some research and figure out what would be best for you. Let's go over stitching. There are several different stitch patterns that are used for wetsuits and which one your wetsuit has is not as important as whether or not the stitching on your wetsuit is glued or taped. Glued or taped stitches keep out water, whereas stitches that are not glued or taped do not keep out water. If you're diving in warm tropical waters, this might not be that important to you. However, if you're a person who dives in colder waters, you do not want water seeping in through the stitching because you're gonna feel it and it's going to make you cold. So you want to consider purchasing a wetsuit that has glued or taped stitching so that it can keep you warmer because it is significantly better than stitching that is not glued or taped that's going to allow water to seep through. When looking at your scuba diving wetsuit, you're gonna notice that the vast majority of scuba diving wetsuits have their zippers in the back. If you see a wetsuit with a zipper in the front, it's not necessarily meant for scuba diving. More than likely, it's meant for kayaking, swimming, or any other water sport. But scuba diving wetsuits have their zippers in the back, and that's what you're gonna find most of the time. The one exception to this is if you purchase a Farmer John. If you purchase a Farmer John wetsuit, the overlayer might have the zipper across the front, but that's because you have an underlayer that is already protecting you when you dive. Next, we're gonna talk about wetsuit accessories. There are several accessories that you can purchase um, with your wetsuit that you can use to scuba dive to make you comfortable. You can purchase gloves for your hands. You can even purchase pockets to put on the thighs of your wetsuits, and those pockets are usually glued on the wetsuit, or you can purchase a pair of shorts that the pockets are attached to that you can go ahead and put up. Other things that you can get are vests, that you can put underneath your wetsuit to keep you warm should the wetsuit not be enough under certain circumstances and you can purchase hoods to keep you warm as well. A little thing about hoods, you lose a lot of body heat from your head. So oftentimes if you feel like your wetsuit isn't keeping you that warm, just putting on a hood can be a huge difference. So that's something to keep in mind as well. We need to discuss some buoyancy considerations when choosing wetsuits. 
It's important to remember that wetsuits are positively buoyant. What that basically means is that you're going to have to add ballast to your dive gear when you're diving a wetsuit. Now with that in mind, there's some things you need to know. The thicker the wetsuit, the more positively buoyant the wetsuit's going to be, which means that thicker wetsuits will require more weight. Second, if you're diving a full suit versus diving a shorty, the full suit is actually going to help you trim out more because you're going to have wetsuit material on your legs, whereas a shorty is not. So that's something to consider as well when you're purchasing a wetsuit and choosing between a shorty or a full suit. As instructors, we recommend full body wetsuits because of the fact that they provide more trim than shorties and because they provide exposure protection that shorties don't. I personally always dive in a full body wetsuit when I'm in the water. And if I ever feel like I'm too warm, I have some things that I can do to go ahead and compensate for that. One thing is I can just pull the neck seal and allow more water to get in the wetsuit, or I can unzip the wetsuit to allow water to flow through. Now we can't do a wetsuit video without talking about the elephant in the room. We all know that there's two types of divers, right? Those who pee in the wetsuit and those who lie about it. But the reality of the situation is that you really shouldn't pee in your wetsuit. You have to remember, your wetsuit traps water. If you pee in it, it's also gonna trap pee. And especially if you have a wetsuit that does not allow any water to pass through. When you get out of the water, what are you gonna smell like? What's your wetsuit gonna smell like? So it's, it's important for you to remember that unless you absolutely have to, don't pee in your wetsuit. If you're a diver and you like this video, then you're gonna to wanna to download our free guide, The Four Keys to Mastering Your Diving. It's over here on your right. In it, we go over four little known tricks that you can do right away to increase your comfort underwater, become a more efficient diver, and have longer, more enjoyable dives.